Bible, we must do all we can. We must do all that is required to build our faith. In 1 John 5, verse 4, the Bible concluded there by saying, Hey, whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. And this is that victory that overcomes even our faith. So any attack at your faith is an attack on your victory. Anything that wants to attack your faith or that wants to make your faith and my faith weak is out to make us lose victory. But by the word you are hearing tonight and all that you have had in the course of this month, I see your faith being strengthened in the name of Jesus. Amen. We must also understand that faith grows by the word of God and it has unlimited capacity for growth. Faith grows by the word of God and it has unlimited capacity for growth. You can never, we can never get to a point where you say, okay, my faith has finished growing. No, there is always a room for your faith and my faith to grow. In 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3, he said that we are bound to give God friends always. He said because we have heard that your faith did grow exceedingly. Your faith grows and that shows to us and place a responsibility on us that we must continue to invest in our faith for it to continue to grow. The more we build our faith, the stronger it becomes for battle. The more we build our faith, the stronger it becomes for battle. There's a construction work going on here beside where we live here. The kind of rock they are being, that is being used. I've not seen the building plan, but I know that building will not be less than 15 to 20 stories. Why? I could decide that, or I could, I could attempt to say that because of the size and the volumes of the rod that is being used. By reason of the volume and the strength of the rod that is being used. And what is that teaching us? It's saying to you and I, the stronger our faith, the more victory we can command. <clears throat> the stronger your faith, the stronger my faith, the more victory you can command. I see your faith getting stronger by the day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, tonight, a word from the Lord has come our way again. A word of the Lord is coming your way, and I know by this word, something is entering into you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 said, and the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. By the word you are hearing tonight, the Spirit will enter you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So very quickly tonight, I want to share with us on what is captioned, celebrating the victory of faith over coronavirus. Hallelujah. Is somebody excited about that? Yes. Celebrating the victory of faith over coronavirus. I will read two scriptures. First John chapter 16 and verse 33. Celebrating the victory of faith over coronavirus. That's why you need to invest in your faith. You need and I need to invest in my faith and your faith. John chapter 16 and verse 33. I'm going to read it to us tonight. John chapter 16 and verse 33. He said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, that's the first scripture. The second scripture, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Please come with me. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. The Bible said, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. 
Now, putting the two scriptures together, he said, in this world, there will be tribulations. In this world, there will be all kinds of pestilence and disease. He said, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. But what is that instrument of overcoming? First John 5 for told us, he said, whatsoever that is born of God, whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. And this is that victory that overcomes even our faith. So the, wish, the weapon to overcoming is the weapon of faith. Can I hear loud? Amen. Amen. Now, hear this. There is nothing new under the earth. Ecclesiastes like chapter 1 verse 9. There is nothing new. There is nothing new. So this virus, this plague is not new. It's not new. And he says to the one last night, he said, there is nothing new under the sun. A lot of research has been done from history. We have seen that there are instances where this, there are plagues like this. But here it is, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 told us, he said, there is no temptation that is taking us that is not common unto man. But he said, God in that same temptation will make a way out. In other words, every trial and temptation is common to man. No matter what temptation you are facing, majorly now the temptation of the, you know, the epidemic, but hear this, it is common to man. And the good news is, he said, God in that same temptation will make a way out. And that is why you and I must refuse to be anxious. We must therefore Refuse to be anxious for nothing. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He said we should not be anxious for anything, including this play. Why? It is not your lot. And I said to someone tonight, it is not your lot. It is not your lot. The same way the corona came, the same way the virus came, in the name of Jesus the Christ, the same way it will return back to where it's coming from in the name of Jesus. About two weeks ago in church, God did some things. We were praying, and what was the title of that prayer focus? Back to the center. You see, everything God does, He has already gone ahead. So, this same play is the return back to the center. Amen. Let me hear your loud amen. amen. Whatever believers do not fear cannot befall them. Don't forget where we started from. We said there's nothing new under the sun, including this plague. And we also said every trial and every trial and temptation is common to man. But hear this: whatever a believer will not fear will not fall on him, will not befall him. Job chapter three, verse twenty-four and thirty-five. Job three, twenty-four and twenty-five. The Bible says concerning him, and he himself said, "He said the things I greatly fear are befalling me." The things I greatly fear are befalling me. The things I greatly fear are befalling me. So you must tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I was putting up some things some few hours ago on this subject of our exemption. Because, you see, if you find yourself lonely or you are alone, the devil will be whispering some things to your heart. He will be whispering some things to your heart. He will whisper. So all you need at such points, like we have our common scripture for this season, there are the things that you need to begin to remind yourself. I was looking at some testimonies of exemption in scriptures. Some testimonies of exemption in scriptures. And I discovered about five or six of them. Now, look at one. And you know what? God has not changed. God has not changed. Because in my meditation, and the only people just said to me, everywhere is ravaged with fear now. Everybody is afraid. Everybody is afraid. And you see, fear, if you, we do nothing about it, it remains. But suddenly, while I was just looking at this subject, the only people just said to me, if you must continue to stay fear free, there's a path to it, and that is recalling testimonies. Recalling of testimonies. When you take time to recall testimonies 
And like we have just said, there is to spare you and I. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. In Exodus chapter 10, also, verse 21 to 23, we saw the, saw the children of Israel. There were darkness everywhere, but where the children of Israel were, there was light. Now, these are testimonies. Let me hear you loud, amen. Now, hear this also. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 28, the word says, anything we refuse to be afraid of turns out to become a testimony. Anything we refuse to be afraid of turns out to be a testimony. Anything we refuse to be afraid of turns out to be a testimony. And this same corona issue will eventually become a testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 28. He said, and in nothing terrified by your adversary, which was to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Listen to that. Listen, look at that passage very well. Look at it. He said, in nothing, including this plague, don't be terrified. To them is an egg, is a token. Who are those he's talking about? They don't believe us. To the ones that have mocked you, to the ones that say, Where is God? He said to them, it shall be a partition. But what about it for you? He said, but to you of salvation and that of God. He said, for you, it shall be salvation. And what is salvation? It shall be a victory for you. It shall be a victory. That means the same thing that is swallowing them, just like the water. The same water that destroyed the disobedient was the same water that lifted up the ark of Noah. And here, my beloved, prophetically, this same plague that come to destroy the ones that say, where is God? Is this same plague, this same season that God will use to elevate you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody believe that you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Therefore, no satanic resistance that can stand up the power of prayer, faith, and fasting. There is no satanic resistance that can stop the power of your prayer, the power of your faith, and the power of your fasting. And that's what we are doing today. We have waited on the Lord. And what are we saying to the Lord? Lord, heal our land. So when we pray in faith and we engage in fasting, what happens? The ground is subdued for us. The land is subdued for us. The land is subdued. Remember, Isaiah chapter 15, verse 6. He said, Is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose? the bands of wickedness, and to let the captive go free. So by your prayer and fasting today, that band of wickedness, that band of this satanic plague is broken in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now also hear this. As believers, we must be conscious of this, that whatever we buy by faith on earth is settled for delivery. Like we have prayed tonight, we have said, Lord, we buy that spirit of Corona. We bind it. Everywhere the believers worldwide, every believer globally, we bind. We bind the spirit of coronavirus. I saw a clip early hours of today. And what was it? In the chambers, America. They were repenting and crying before the Lord. Lord have mercy. We know we have sinned. We know we have earned. And several other videos like that. Showing that, look, the heart of man is beginning to pant after God in repentance. I know that is where our confidence lies. What did the Bible say? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, he said, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. That's why I'm convinced that an end has come to this plague in the name of Jesus. Amen. But what must we do? Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. If you have somebody there, I'd like you to say together with me, say, in the name of Jesus, name we bind the spirit of coronavirus. We bind the spirit of corona. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as we stand against this place on first place today, in agreement of faith, it shall be subdued and swallowed up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me hear you loud. Amen. Amen. Our case as believers is settled. I'd like you to hear that. Continue to tell yourself, 
as a believer, your case is settled. But you know what? We are called to stand in the gap. Our case is settled, but we have a responsibility to stand in the gap. Even again tonight, as we are standing in the gap, I see that plea sent back to where it's coming from in the name of Jesus. Amen. That includes, if we can believe God that all things are possible, according to Mark 27, Mark 10, 27, and Mark chapter 9, verse 23, that all things are possible to him that believes. That means this evil will not come near us. And an end has come to this place. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody believe that we hear your loud amen. 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 Are you blessed tonight? Yes. Give the Lord your beacon of praise wherever you are watching from. Say with me, I'm free. I'm free. I'm secure. I'm secure. I'm preserved. I'm preserved. No evil, no evil. Is, permitted is permitted to come near my dwelling. Amen. As a child of God, as a child of God. Washed by the blood of Jesus, blood I am Jesus. defended, I am, I am covered, I am, covered. I am protected I am in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus. Again, give the Lord your big of praise. Now, I'd like us to, wherever you are, rise up to your feet. We want to pray right now. We want to pray right now. And for as many of us that can pray the Holy Ghost, I want us to do this prayer in the Holy Ghost. But before then, you have had those words tonight, you are not born again. Let me know as you. Hear me, beloved. Your security is in God. So if you are not born again, you are outside of Him. And that would be too risky for you. So you want to say, pray this prayer of faith with me, give your heart to Jesus. Or you want to rededicate your life to God. I'd like to pray with you tonight. I'd like you to place your right hand on your chest as you will surrender yourself to Jesus. And pray this prayer with me. That's for those of us giving our lives to Christ or rededicating our lives to Him. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. Jesus, come into my heart and give me a new beginning. I want to thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray with you right now. Father, thank you for those ones watching. Thank you for the power of salvation that appeared to them. Lord, I ask that these ones are preserved in the name of Jesus. Amen. You foul devil. I declare in the name of Jesus, these ones are born again. So take off your hands from them in the name of Jesus. From today, begin to walk in victory. Begin to walk in dominion. And begin to walk in power in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, before we take the communion, like I said, in the next five minutes, wherever you are watching from, we will be lifting up our voice as we stand in the gap. As we stand in the gap. And what are we saying? We are decreeing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saying we bind that spirit of coronavirus. We bind you. I'd like you to mention the name. And engage the name of Jesus. Because the Bible said he was given a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee was bound, including coronavirus. Yes. So in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of corona will bind you. As you are doing that, you are praying your understanding, you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice now and pray with me right now. In the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of coronavirus, we bind you right now. We bind you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bind you right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind you right now. In the name of Jesus, as children of God, who are you? We stand tonight and we bind you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind you. Through foul spirit of coronavirus, we bind you in the name of Jesus. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We bind you through foul spirit. We bind you right now. In the name of Jesus. Now let's listen to my voice and make that decree. He said, Whatsoever we shall bind your life shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever we shall do to them is loose in heaven. Now let's bind this foul spirit. We bind you. We bind you. We bind you. We bind you. In the name of Jesus. We bind you. We bind you. We bind you. We bind you. In the name of Jesus. 
We bind you. Let rain go back at her. La la baka sun to marada. La ria baka sata. Somebody pray hard for you tonight. Somebody engage from your heart tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Your foul spirit. Your foul spirit. Your foul spirit of Corona. We bind you tonight. In the name of Jesus. We bind you tonight. In the name of Jesus. We bind you tonight. Rapa <laughs>
and not too far from now, we'll be all gathered again physically, mm -hmm. where we'll be seeing ourselves again in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. And return with your testimony. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And now together, let's share the goodness, surely, God's goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and, and we shall bear the path of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. And also it's my passion in Christ. And what eyes have not seen or yet had shall be experienced all through 2020. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great time.